the philosophy with a 43-year-old quarterback whose entire career has not been built on throwing the no-risk-it-no-biscuit stuff. Having said that, let me frame the question a little differently for you guys. Rams look awfully good. Bucks have really struggled. So if I were to tell you, and Jeff Saturday, I'll start with you, that one of the teams we were watching last night is going to wind up in the Super Bowl this year, which one would you tell me, Jeff Saturday, it's going to be? I'd have to say the Rams, and as much as it pains me to say that, because you know I've been a Bucks apologist kind of the whole season, right? I, I believe this team was going to gel and get better as the season progressed, but they have have not. And give the Rams a ton of credit. Their defense has played really well all season, but they but the Buccaneers challenged Jared Goff to beat them, and guess what? He beat them. I mean, he outdueled Tom Brady. He went after him and beat him. Give him a ton of credit. So I got to go. I got to go Rams there. Uh, let's go to Greg McElroy. What do you think? Which of last night's teams would you bet will make it to the Super Bowl? It's the Rams, and they are resembling a formula that is awfully similar to the 2019 49ers. Young, offensive-minded head coaches, quarterbacks that are talented, but maybe a slightest bit of a liability, a decent rushing attack, and then a dominant and physical defensive front along with a talented ball-hawking secondary. We know that the 49ers almost won the Super Bowl last year, and if you look at the Rams here in 2020, they're kind of using the exact same formula. Maybe the results will be similar as well. Graziano, what do you think? Let me be clear, I'm still picking the Saints to represent the NFC in the Super Bowl, but if you're limiting me to the teams that played last night, I have to agree with these guys and say the Rams. It's just very close to the group that was in the Super Bowl a couple of years ago, and you look at Tampa, look, this, this stuff doesn't work in the NFL where you slap a team together with a bunch of talent and hope that they can win the Super Bowl first time out of the gate. A team has to play together. They didn't have an off-season together. This is a team that brought in Tom Brady, had Tom Brady kind of like do a LeBron James kind of pick the roster kind of thing where he adds all, they are all the players he wants, and now they're not designing plays that are suited for his game. It doesn't look great to me with Tampa Bay for, the, for their chances at the Super Bowl. I completely agree, which is the reason I will go in the other direction, because the problems that the Buccaneers have are so obvious that I can see them. And so if I can see them, why can't the coaching staff see them? Why can can't someone... Them? Well, I can fix them. Stop throwing the ball down the damn field. Tom Brady is 43 years old. He should be hitting his back foot on a three-step drop and getting the ball out quick. And somehow Bruce Arians has decided he's living and dying on the hill of no risk it, no biscuit. Maybe that's why Jameis Winston threw all those interceptions. And maybe that's why Tom Brady's team Ooh. looks so bad doing it. That's what I think. Let me bring the one and only okay. Stephen A. Smith into the conversation. It has been much too long. Oh, there he is. 25 minutes from now, first take will come your way. Hello again, Stephen. It has been much too long. I, I want to pick up on, the conversation man? there. You know, Tampa Tom and, and yep. everything else with the Buccaneers. So much attention all season long. We've seen some real deep lows from that team, some very mm -hmm. bad performances. Do you think they can turn it around in time to make a real shot at a Super Bowl? Not only do I think they can turn it around, I'm incredibly disappointed with my brother Jeff Saturday, uh, of course, Dan Graziano, uh, Greg McElroy, the outstanding job that they do on an everyday basis. Love those guys. But I must say I'm very, very disappointed. Tom Brady, yes, he might be 43, and through him throwing the ball down the field, he's been clearly inaccurate, leading the league in incompletions with 20-plus yards. We get all of that. But the flip side to it is that, he is 43. He is a six-time Super Bowl champion. He has shown a tendency to correct the wrongs. Resume, last time I checked, does matter. All three of those guys are the first people to bring it up. And then when you combine that with the fact that, again, Antonio Brown just arrived. Chris Godwin has been injured to some degree this season, even though he's in there now. Mike Evans is there. Gronkowski is there. O.J. Howard went down like the third or the fourth game of the season. There's been a lot of changes. And thank God somebody has pointed out the job that Bruce Arians is not doing. This is a man that was a, obviously a big-time offensive coordinator with Pittsburgh. He gets the offensive coordinator's position in Indianapolis as well as an assistant head coach. Pagano goes down because of his illness. He guides the Indianapolis coach to a 9-3 record. He That leads to the Arizona job. This man is a veteran. He has been around the league for a very, very long time. He has a resume himself. What about holding him accountable? Just a few seconds ago when I heard somebody bring up, stop throwing the ball down the damn field. Did it come from Jeff Saturday? No. Did it come from Graziano, the reporter extraordinaire? No. Did it come from Greg McElroy, who's an analyst extraordinaire? Oh, no. It came from Mike 
Greenberg. I just don't understand it. It's almost as if everyone is looking for Tom Brady to fall on his face. And I'm saying he has shown throughout his history. Let the brother sit up there and see the mistakes that he make. And when it really, really counts, will he duplicate those mistakes? The answer has been known at least nine times in 18 years when he went to the Super Bowl in that span. If anybody deserves the benefit of the doubt, I'm saying, can a brother get it? Can he get it? I think he deserves it. Stephen A., you and I, like most geniuses, will not be fully appreciated until after our time. And I will give you the stats as well. He has thrown the ball 20 yards or more down the field more times than any other quarterback in the NFL this season. It is nonsensical. Okay, one more thing I want to bring up with you, if I may. And now that we are sitting here with this opinion that we're, we're sort of melded together in this, I almost feel a little bad doing it. But you know what's about to happen, don't you? You know that based on how terrible this division is, the Dallas Cowboys are going to win the NFC East. Isn't that right? Yeah, you know, you're right. Um, <laughs> It's, uh, it's very, very sad. Uh, it's, it's pretty pathetic. Um, I had one of my best friends, one of my college buddies, his name is Mark Turner. Uh, I love him to death, love him like a little brother, but I don't talk to him during the football season, during the months of <laughs> September through December. I don't talk to him at all because he's just one of those disgusting, nauseating Dallas Cowboy fans. <laughs> and sure enough, Greeny, at 7 o'clock on Sunday evening with the Dallas Cowboys elevating themselves to uh, uh, just an impressive 3-7 and seven record, this man decides to leave me a voice message about how they're winning the division, they're going to the playoffs, and they're going to have a legitimate shot at a Super Bowl. This is what Dallas Cowboy fans are. Skunks smell better than Dallas Cowboy <laughs> fans. The stench that the stench that Dallas Cowboy fans leave behind because of how they bloviate about themselves when they have absolutely no reason to do so is just a very, very disgusting thing. But there is a silver lining in all of this. Last year, nothing could be better than last year. There's no way to go but down. Because to lose from Thanksgiving all the way through Christmas was just one of the most beautiful, beautiful holiday seasons I've ever had in my lifetime. Now <laughs> They're not doing that, of course, in this particular situation, or at least as we know, they could lose to Washington Sunday, I mean Thursday. We understand that. But even if they win, why have their season ruined so early? Let them get their hopes up and then let it come plummeting down like it always does. So there is a silver lining. The fact that, guess what? You think for a second that you actually got a shot. You might start sticking out your chest and acting like you all at, and then you'll come crashing down. That would really, really be nice to see for the Dallas Cowboy fans to get their, their hopes up right around Christmas time, and then it just comes plummeting down. But unfortunately, because the NFC East is so awful, chances are the Dallas Cowboys, you know, they won't really experience that level of misery, their fans, that is, until after the new year. That's the sad part. I wanted it to be around Christmas. I'll have to wait a week or two. Stephen A., it is a delight to see.